So, which we plan for the today's session. So, here I would like to discuss about few of the theory concepts available under this APM. Okay. So, what are all the various theory concepts we have under this particular tool? Let's start from today. In which, the first one is, I would like to start the discussion with a mobile testing. So, here, for today and tomorrow, we are going to discuss about mobile testing. What are all the various types we have? What? What is a native app? What is a hybrid app? And all those are information we are going to study in today and tomorrow session. So over here, the first point of which we need to know is, you know, in the current market, there are a number of mobile phones available based on the requirement. Okay. So based on the requirement, people are using their mobile phones. Personal computers are almost hold all the data like emails, photos, music, videos like that. I can access my data where I am by using a smartphone and I can use it as a navigation and an information system to find out about my surroundings. Okay, so it means that we can use a mobile phone to store some information. We can use our mobile phone to get the navigation for a specific location. For all that particular reason, I can expect my mobile phone should be reliable and fast and easy to use. Right, whenever we are using those many features on a particular mobile phone means it should be fast enough and it should be reliable as well. And even it should be easy to use. Now, this is what my expectation from a mobile. But everyone has a different exception. Okay. Everyone has a different expectation. That is why we can call as a user expectation. Okay, that is why we can call it as an user expectation. So the ultimate point out over here is that depending on a person need, the app requirements will change, right? In my perspective, my mobile phone should be considering of a navigation purpose. Few people are using that particular one for games. Few people are using for mobile banking. So person to person, the perspective, the uses of the various kinds of an application will differ. Okay, so here this is a small link which shows you the various statistics. Okay, for the mobile app survey report which was conducted a year before. Okay, so this is a mobile app survey. So if you observe out over here, it's stating that what is the difference between a mobile app and a mobile website, right? The basic difference between a mobile app and as well as a mobile website. Let me make a note out over here. Mobile app, mobile website. The meaning means applications which we are opening on mobile browser okay applications which we are opening on a mobile browser and apps which we are trying to open from our mobile fine done so what is the basic difference between these two so the best example for this mobile app is whatsapp Okay, this application is a mobile app which is having access to my mobile features like I can capture a pic or I can perform a video call which uses 
system app which is a camera functionality right so it means mobile app will interact with the system apps and other apps available in a mobile phone so the ultimate point is it will interact with system apps and the features in the mobile phones whereas the mobile web app which can't interact with system apps just our application will display on a browser which was a developed using various UI technologies that's it so that's a simple point so mobile app will interact with the various kinds of system applications available whereas the mobile web app we won't interact with the system apps that's the most important point which we people need to remember out over here fine so if you switch back to the link and it is having a too many features like uh, the app integration the communication between the external world and as well as a mobile app all these information was there in its app which was not there in an mobile websites okay fine and here it's gonna display the market share of each and every operating system so windows is a uh, windows is a two percent blackberry is a seven percent apple is a 23 percent and android is a 56 percent of the market share we have okay and usually on an average, these many app downloads are there for this particular year. Okay, these many app downloads are there for this particular year. Okay, fine. And then this will display the total number of apps available for this particular year. So there are roughly 6 lakhs available for this 2012. Okay, there are 6 lacks of applications available and as for the current market there might be increased a lot okay fine so this is all about okay so this is all about a statistical representation of the mobile app and as well as okay a statistical representation of a mobile app and as well as a mobile web app and which one is leading the market and all the information we are going to specify and usually if you observe over here a simple point how quickly should a mobile app will launch usually 99 percent of the cases my app should run within a two or a three seconds okay my app should run within a two or a three seconds whatever the app you are trying that app should open up within a two to three seconds that's what the average of wait time for a particular app okay cool fine great so and this app this documentation or else this link contains various features okay so if you want you can just walk through this particular link or whatever i have given here so i will share this document in our google driver folder which you people can access it okay which you people can access it from your apps and then the next and most important point here is points to remember while testing a mobile app gather the information about your possible target customer group so for sure the reason is based on the target group itself the number of hits for the app will be designed for suppose assume that we are designing a game 
So for that, that the target group is a bit different. Assume that we are designing a banking app. The target would be somewhat different. So based on the app, the target, the customer group will change. And here we need to get the requirements a document for that particular app and the ultimate objective for developing a particular mobile app is that app needs to solve the problem for the user what are all the various problems we have for that app the app whatever we are designing it should solve all those problems usability really matters your app needs to be more reliable and robust. App performance is also the most important thing and the app UI should be beautiful. Okay, so these are all the basic points of which we will consider on a mobile app. Okay, which we will consider on a mobile app. So here, the next and the most important point of which we need to consider is about mobility and a data networks so generally few points of which we need to consider out over here are mobile apps need to be tested in a real life in real environment where the potential users will use them like that we need to test that particular app what happens if you have a bad or no internet connection while using the app will it crash or will it still work what happens if the mobile device changes the network provider while the app is being used? Even we need to consider all these points whenever we are testing a mobile app. Okay, whenever we are testing a mobile app, we need to consider all these things. Guys, if you observe so far what we discussed means, as per my expectation, what exactly, how exactly my smartphone feel looks, looks like, and then uh, we just navigated to this link. We studied about the various uh, statistics like uh, what kind of an operating system is leading the markets and then uh, how many mobile apps downloads are there. What is the difference uh, between mobile app, uh, mobile app and as well as an uh, app which we are opening on a mobile browser. And then uh, the average time that app should respond and the total number of downloads and other basic information we have studied from this link and later we are studying about the most important points which we need to consider while testing a mobile app. So far these are all the points which we discussed guys. Is it point clear for everybody or do you have any questions for me? Am I clear for you all? Or do you have uh, any questions for me on this? Cool. Divya, Sweta, Vaseen, Uma. Is this clear for you all? Cool. Then guys. So once we are done up to here, okay, so the next point of which we need to concentrate out over here is the various kinds of mobile devices we have. So we have three different kinds of devices with multiple operating systems. The three different devices are dumb phones, feature phones, and as well as the smartphones too. Dumb feature and as well as the smartphones. Dumb phone means which are used to receive a calls or which are used to just make a calls and sending a messages, which is an earlier phones. The next one is a featured phones 
where in which uh, the featured phone contains a calling functionality, messaging functionality, even it has a games functionality, calendar and a basic web browser we have available under this featured phone. Whereas moving on to a smartphone, it has all the features are listed down under the featured phone along with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS and a few more features are provided by the manufacturers. Okay, so the platforms of which support these smartphones are iOS, Android, Windows and as well as a Blackberry. So here is a link which clearly shows you the complete market share, okay, which clearly shows you the complete market share here, okay, fine, see here, if you observe, this one was uh, gathered the information in the year November 2016, and if you observe, this is for 2016 quarter 3. Samsung is having a 21% Apple this much share and all other mobiles are having a this much share. And in detail about this particular information was listed down out over here. Okay, in detail about this information was listed down out over here. For the last year, so if you clearly observe the other phones are really leading the market. Apart from Samsung, Apple, Oppo, Vivo. So the other phones are really leading the market here. That's what the market share was represented. Okay. That's what the market share was represented on this particular screenshot. You can navigate to that link and you can have a look into the pictorial representation of that particular slide. Usually, a simple question will rise in our mind. Okay, assume that we are working on an application and we got a mobile app for testing. So, immediately a simple question will rise in our mind on which device we need to test this application. So, find out the right mobile device for testing. Right, so that's what the most important point. The reason is, Testing an application which was developed with every possible hardware and a software combination is really impossible. And the fact that you should test your app in a real environment make it ever, okay, make it even more impossible. So here we need to find a strategy which should downsize the effort of testing on a different devices and to find a right way or to identify the right devices in testing our mobile app. So the ultimate point out over here is that even we need to downsize the total number of devices and we need to identify an appropriate device for testing a mobile app. So usually, in order to identify a device, the following questions need to be answered. Okay, so what is my user base? How old is the average or age of my users? How many men and women are in my target user group? Which platform is used? most among the user base which device they use at most the reason is here assume that we are developing an a mobile app which contains a small game okay like some kind of a balloon shooting or something like that so while designing my app i know that my target group is students are the guys who are less than 18 years old. That's what my target group is. So, before developing the application, I will conduct an analysis to get the information about that target group. How many men are going to use? 
the similar app how many women are going to use the similar app and then what kind of a platform they are using a most frequently and what kind of a devices they are using and then which software is installed on most of the phones and what kind of a sensors my app should use and how does the app should communicate with an outside world what is my app main use case so these are all the key points which we need to consider in order to identify a device identify a right device these are all the most important things among these things which device is used what software version what kind of a sensors and then what is my user base or else a target user group and what kind of a platform and a device is used most in my target group so these kind of answers we need to know before moving into identification of a right device once we have all these information then based on the end user devices selection only we will identify the right device okay based on the end user selection only we will identify a right device cool so usually a simple question will rise in our mind android releases and an ios releases and every day we are getting a new phone into a market See, assume that I am testing my application on an Android 5 version. So immediately uh, the Android version got changed to 6. Or else, I am using a Samsung S4 mobile, where in the market today we got a Samsung S6 mobile with the latest operating system. So the point out over here is, do we need to buy each and every phone Right, do we need to buy each and every phone that releasing into a market or do we need to update your Android operating system all the time? So these kind of a questions and a challenges will come into our mind. The reason is we do have a frequent update for the operating system and you know there are a number of new mobile phones available in a market so how we are going to downsize your testing effort so over here in order to handle the faster pace of a mobile release cycle you should keep the following things in our mind monitor the mobile devices and a software market so it means what is your operating system and try to monitor the operating system market and even the mobile devices releasing into them and know whenever the new phone will be rolled out if so study the operating system features and specifically features related to that particular mobile phone find out about the new features that's what we already discussed keep an eye on your word, target the customer group to see if the new devices are showing up in their statistics. So we do have a couple of statistics running specifically designed for our target groups which will specify the above listed information from the users. This kind of an information we can get it. So just check out whether the target group is changing that information or not. Think twice before updating the phone to a latest operating OS. Buy a new phone with the latest operating system instead of upgrading. If buying is not an option, rent a device. Okay, if buying is not an option, just rent a particular device which you want to test. So these are all the basic things which we need to monitor. Okay, these are all the basic things which we need to monitor out of one year. Fine. And then the facts which we need to know about these mobile testing are if the application is not working and having a bugs in that, this might be the first, this is the first reason where 
people are uninstalling our app the quality reasons are the prime reasons for bad reviews in a play store and even application content related issues is just for 20 percent and 60 percent of the mobile users will abandon your app or site if it doesn't load up within a three seconds three seconds of the users okay or else majority of the users roughly 43 percent of the users said that they wouldn't even return to your app or site if it is not loading up within a three seconds and for suppose whenever a user is using an app if your app got a crash 32 percent of the users will report a negative review on a marketplace for each and every crash okay whenever you are working on an application if your application got a crash means 32 percent of the users will log a negative review on a marketplace for each and every crash okay for each and every crash they use it to log a negative reviews over there fine and the next one is the myths for these mobile testing are testing on emulators emulators over here means it's an virtual devices for an android okay testing on emulators is enough testing on a four to five or most commonly desired devices is enough exploratory testing just before the launch is enough user will understand if there are some issues in the app the reason is it's not at all possible for us to test the application on all the available mobile devices so that's the reason we should identify the most frequently used mobile devices from there we need to restrict our testing for just a four to five mobile devices okay so these are the myths which we need to consider Guys, okay, is this point clear for everybody which we discussed so far about the generic theory concept or do you have any specific questions for me on this cool then I'm to here and a small okay in the tomorrow's class we are going to study about the various kinds of mobile networks available for us and a complete market share for each and every operating system and the comparisons between an Android and as well as an iOS the different types of apps this is the most important thing which we need to know the pros and cons of each and every mobile app types and what are all the various types of apps available in a Play Store and even an introduction about the getting of information and how can we get okay how can we get the user information and the target group we are gonna study in our tomorrow session so we are gonna wind up the theory part by tomorrow so day after tomorrow we are gonna start the practical sessions okay